This video is going to be going over the configuration of a nine front system. Um, some of this does apply to plan nine, but this is going to have some very specific nine front stuff in it. So we can see here, if we look at the various processes running, the very first one is this boot RC. Now that's going to be sort of like the first like official user process that's kind of ran, but there's some stuff that happens even before that. So this video, I'm just going to run through basically everything. I won't go into a deep dive. I'll have some later videos that go into specific details on specific files. But this is just going to be sort of a primer for like everything, the entire chain that's involved from powering on the computer to sitting at a Rio terminal. So if we go into the kernel here, uh, this is for the PC64. This is going to be your AMD64 your you know, modern Intel stuff. This is the configuration file that the um, um, is used for setting up the kernel, like what drivers are going to be installed. Anything with a little hash sign in front of it is commented out. So, you know, most people don't have floppies nowadays, so it doesn't bother to do that. If you want to add something like that, this is where you'd change it. Uh, these are like various ethernet cards. You know, some are installed by default, some aren't. Um, you know, you could go down here. This is like if you had an old school Sound Blaster 16. I know that some people use this because it works on some um, some emulators and so on. So, you know, old graphics cards and stuff. So this is the first thing that would you'd use to configure a kernel to be compiled. So once the compile uh, the kernel's compiled and you run it, the first thing that goes through is this L.S. This is all sort of low level assembly stuff. Um, and there's definitely some fun notes in here because uh, the way you boot uh, modern Intel stuff still involves a ton of backwards compatible things going way, way back. But at some point you'll get to a call to the main function. And this will end up here in main.c and you'll get to the main function. And this is gonna run through a bunch of stuff. This boot args here, this is gonna be what's gonna like uh, go through your plan9.ini file and pull out the various things that you set there. It's gonna set up a bunch of stuff. You know, here's where it actually prints, you know, that plan nine, at the, you know, when the system first boots. Um, you'll get down to the bottom and user init and schedule init are going to set up to run this process up here, this init zero. So here we can see it's actually going to try and figure out if you're going to be running as a terminal or a CPU. Because um, that needs to be passed on very quick to dictate how the system's going to boot. And that's going to be a fork in the road that eventually comes up. So it's going to at least get that bit of information along with sort of, you know, what type of CPU you're running. Um, it's going to do this to user. Now this is jumping out of kernel space into user space. Um, that'll call this, which basically just calls start boot. So start boot, now we're getting into the portable code. So here in the portable code, we've got init code C. Here's our start boot. And here we're obviously setting up some various kernel devices. So, you know, your cons, environmental variables, file, uh, file descriptors, proc, share, serve, very basic stuff is going to be set up here. And then it's going to execute boot. So the boot program is it's still considered portable code, but it's in a separate sort of directory called boot with some very boot specific things. It's going to come here and run this. Again, we're doing some setup. So um, all kernels include a little compressed file system full of programs you might need during boot time. You know, one of them is obviously going to be the RC shell because there's going to be scripts run after this um, along with things like uh, um, IP config and stuff like that to set up the network. So it's going to do a few more things to set up, you know, bind in, you know, RC scripts in a bin. And then it's actually going to call an RC script, this boot RC, which is also included here in 9boot. So 
this starts up more of the boot process. And now we're actually running RC and we're running a script in it. So we can see we do this mount gen. This is, uh, you know, generates a mount point for things like in and mount. Um, here we start binding in more kernel devices. We set up an IP interface. So this is binding in, you know, the actual ethernet and um, the, um, the TCP stack and stuff like that. Um, usually better than 1970, RTC, it's a real-time clock, so it's gonna try to fetch the time and actually set that up and go through. Now, you know, it's gonna pass through a lot of this, get down to here, and it's gonna call various stuff. And the main function is up here. So this is where you, you know, it runs through all this and you'll actually get your little prompt that you see so often. This is the boot args. Hey, where do you want to boot from? And it'll stop here and wait for you to give a response. Unless, of course, you set no boot prompt in your plan 9.ini. And it will go through this, you know, depending on what you enter in and start processing various stuff. And one of the things it'll get to eventually is this init command. So it's going to figure out, you know, this is a program just sort of stored in bin for the CPU type. And it's going to figure out whether you're running as a CPU or not, or as a terminal and pass the init command with a flag. So the init command, that's just a regular command that's in the system. So it's under source command. And here's the main for it. So it's going to fire off. It's going to find out whether you passed it a C or a T to figure out if it should be booting your system as a CPU or a terminal. So it's going to go through, set up some stuff, depending on what that is. And if it is a CPU, it's going to check for that. It'll run the CPU start. If not, it'll run this other one, um, which will be for terminals. So for now, I'll go ahead and follow the fork going to terminals. So if it's going to be a terminal, again, it's going to run this um, bin term RC. It's going to set your user home and then run lib profile. So term RC. Then this will show up. It'll go through and start just setting up more stuff. Again, binding in, making sure you have your likely kernel devices you need, your mount points. You know, make sure you got factotum set up correctly. That handles your authentication. Check again for any sort of USB devices you might have. So you can set up, you know, local... Um, you know, extra stuff for just, it's going to check this here to see if that file exists. If it does, it'll run whatever's in there. If you have some local things you have for your local grid terminals to boot. Um, it's going to set the system name if it doesn't have it already. And just continue on doing various setups in here. There's one for just sort of doing the default uh, setup for your IP address, setting up the networking and all that. Um, here's where it's, you know, going to set up DNS, set up time sync if you need it, set up your mouse and screen, and so on. And then after that, I didn't have that open here, it'd be, let's just pull up Glenda since I haven't messed with it yet. And then it'll pull up your profile. And then once it gets to here, Again, we're going to bind in more stuff. So it's going to be your home, your users, bin RC, and then bin CPU type will both be mounted into bin. So any personal programs you have will just show up automatically in the bin directory. It'll set whatever font you're going to be having. And then, of course, we're going to check again to see, are you running as a terminal or CPU? And we're following the terminal path here. So it's going to check to see if you got this running. It'll run WebFS. This is the... Uh, a file system for accessing websites and stuff. You need it just to do things like HGET and things. Uh, plumber, it'll set some things for your mouse. Set your terminal to be term. And then run uh, Rio, or in my case here, I've modified it to run Rio S I Rio start. 
and then at that point you'd be sitting at your you know empty gray space of Rio so I'm going to go back a couple steps here back to the init so if you actually came through this and you're running this as a CPU server so your file server any extra CPU servers you might have or in my case I'll migrate the little even the little pies I have that aren't really used for number crunching but are just for sensor networks and stuff so instead it'll run CPU start very similar to before except we're not calling like profile and stuff because we're not really needing to run you know Rio and everything um, you know CPU tends to start headless and just fires up uh, other stuff so this will be going to CPU RC so that's just RC bin CPU RC again we get into here very similar so you know set up some kernel devices you might need um, various mount points you might want and and mount and stuff make sure factotum's running so you need to authenticate you can have a special local um, CPU RC and that will begin here so it kind of begins before pretty much anything else gets set up so if you have some really particular stuff that will apply to any computer on your grid this is where you'll put it um, especially if you need it um, very early on in the boot process so again we're setting the system name um, checking for any disks that might be on there you know this is, wouldn't be something run like on the terminal because terminals are usually run diskless but you know CPU servers like the file server need to have their disks checked um, so here you can have in config with the sys name CPU RC you can have CPU specific startup scripts so if a particular CPU needs some extra things to run again early in the boot process those can be placed there at this point it will then start going through the default network setup um, do DNS set up time sync so um, that is a system variable here this NTP so again if you don't have one it'll default to using pool ntp.org to synchronize your clocks on your computer here um, it'll then go through and see if you have any specific services you want run in config sysname if you don't it will go through to the defaults so here is where it will check to see is this just a plain CPU server or is this one running auth too um, if it's a CPU server it's going to run basically the default um, services those are going to be let's see here RC bin uh, service there's a directory here of various things that can be ran anything with an exclamation point that's basically like a commenting it out so those won't run so in this case it's just going to run these two um, so this is going to be the standard sort of um, let's see this one here is the yeah this one's for doing a, like a C, like logging in as a CPU and then the other one is your trampoline to your file system. So those are the two ports that will run by default on most systems. You can uncheck these like, you know, if you want to run a web server, that's going to be in TCP 80 and so on. Or FTP is 21. Now, if it runs a auth server, it will also uh, go to services auth and run that script there and that turns your auth server on so that you can authenticate off that thing. Um, to do that, it has to have the keys loaded up so it can actually handle passwords and everything. And it'll keep going through. This is for power management. And then there's a last time where it runs, it'll check config sysname for a script called CPU start. If it's run, it'll do that. So if you have any last things you want to go, uh, it'll do that. So that's basically everything from beginning to start. Um, you know, most things, if you want to modify it, you know, you don't necessarily need to tweak CPURC that much. You can use, you know, these sort of um, either the CPURC local trick or these ones in config sysname, either CPURC or CPU start to add things. Um, but if you really need to change something, you can. Um, 
but that's basically all the steps involved. I'll have some videos later where I show, like, demonstrate, like, using these um, to do various configurations on various computers that you might have on your grid. And uh, in the meantime, uh, have fun.